Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 One Club Story from Hemel Hempstead Town with me, Daniel. We're back with three games to go in the League One season. And I think, looking at the table, even if we lose all three games, there's every chance we might do the unthinkable. For the first time, I think, since FM19 and Torquay, I think we're going to go back to back in a one club story. And that is an incredible achievement when you consider some of the turbulent times we've had, particularly over the January window. But as we said last year in League 2, when we got Ricky J. Jones to go alongside Javan Malcolm, sky's the limit. Leon Bullock is still here. We've got Thornley, who we lost back on loan. And we are now, with three games to go, just two points. I mean, essentially one if you look at the goal difference away from guaranteeing promotion to the championship. That, again, would be slightly ahead of schedule. My aim was to be competing at the top end of the championship by the end of 10 seasons, and we're going to give ourselves two years to settle in now, which is great. So if you're looking forward to seeing if we can wrap up the job at home to Morecambe, away to Barnsley, or at home to Coventry, then please do put a thumbs up on it. A quick disclaimer, if we wrap it up in the first game, we'll skip straight to the last one against Coventry. Charlton have run away, they've already won the title, they're on 97 points. But again, look at the totals at the moment. We would be second on 77 points with three games to go. Just like it was with third place last year in League 2, I know that wasn't us directly then, it's incredibly low totals to get promoted points-wise. It's not like we're blowing teams away, we're not even getting two points a game. So I find it really bizarre that we're about to potentially wrap it up with three games to go. Leon Bullock is still out. He's had that fracture for a long time. Ali Mellon, one of our backup strikers, out too. But we have still obviously been able to pick up enough results, despite being nowhere near our vintage best. If you want to stay up to date, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. We've got an absolutely key moment coming up in the head coach tomorrow. So please do make sure you check that series out tomorrow if you haven't already. And then if we get the success today, we'll have our end of season review here on Friday, followed by a Sunday feature length special from the transfer window. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. You can also find anything you've missed up in the eye above, including the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the food channel too. But let's get cracking by having a look at our recent results, because I think you'll notice a theme here. In that sort of middle section of the season where everyone was fit and we were doing really well, we were battering teams. Here it's just not the case. And you can see... We've not really been in spectacular form. We've not been dominating by any means. You were with me for Notts County and Burton. Since then, well, the first four games after, we picked up four points from four games. And we're somehow still that far clear. We've got further clear, if anything. And it does seem to be the pattern, doesn't it? The teams finish the season really weak and really poorly overall. They just seem to bottle it. For us, we drew one all the way at Exeter. Sol, Alidor, Hamilton got the goal for us there, but a late equaliser pegged us back. Our home to Scunthorpe, one of the sides at the bottom. We had to leave it late, but we did batter them eventually. Ricky J. Jones with a hat-trick in the last 15 minutes, and Ali Mellon nicking a fourth off the bench. A 3-0 defeat followed at Mansfield, an awful performance in that one. And then a 2-0 defeat against Champions Charlton. We held on for a while, but... Look, they're so much better than any other side in the league. And if that's the standard of the championship next year, we're going to have to improve an awful lot. The crucial bit, though, has been April. No vintage performances, no dominance, but two 1-0 victories. Away at Bristol Rovers, thanks to an early Ricky J. Jones goal. And away at Peterborough, thanks to a Javan Malcolm goal. Ricky not doing the same against his former club. So the two strikers, when it matters most, have delivered important goals. But in truth, we haven't really played that well. So hopefully we can find a performance at home to Morecambe today. Just puts the P next to our name. Says promoted, back to back, you're going to the championship. So let's go and get into the first game. We better get a move on because there might yet be three and see what the fixture list is like. So beware of Coventry and Forth who have got a game in hand as well. Of course we play them on the final day, but they can still mathematically topple us too. The games we've got, they're away at Charlton who are top of the league. So that's going to be virtually impossible for them. Crew, the other side we're watching, are away to Mansfield, who battered us. So they're both playing teams in the top six. You'd argue we should be getting out of this one pretty comfortably. So let's go and pick our 11 for today. I'm not sure what we're going to go for, because since the last game, we've had a few injuries and a few others aren't returning. We've been without Swan and Bullock in the number 10 role for some time. Bullock not really declined a lot from his injury, which is a positive. In terms of the team, though, 
I don't know that we've got 18 fit players. Harrop would come in for Mellon. Nidham struggling a little bit. I don't know what else we can do. I would say put in Hornby, but a backup keeper doesn't help us. So let's leave the squad as is. In terms of the 11, I'd like to bring Brian Moore back in, but he's nowhere near fit after a long injury, and I don't really want to risk it in an important game. The only thing I am potentially going to do is change the right backs, but Bennett Sharif has been really good the last couple. So do you know what? I'm going to leave it. Let's keep it consistent. Our 11 for today is Zach G. Cock in goal. Bennett Sharif and Thornhill are the fullbacks with Thorn Lee and Far Carson as centre half. Egan, Hamilton, Hazeman and Reed the midfield diamond. Reed still having to play as the number 10. And then Jones and Malcolm up front. We've got the returning Parry and Brian Watt just easing their way back onto the bench in recent weeks. And a couple of other game changes if we need them. So let's hope we can do the job. Because there's not a huge amount we can bring on if we're desperate. Let's go and get into it though. Hemel Hempstead v Morecambe. And a win wraps up promotion to the championship. Can we go back to back? Let me know in the comments. Well, some big names in this Morecambe team. They've got Raphael Toloy at centre-half. Now, I know it'll be about 37, 38 now. But what a player. Jake Kane is someone we know well. Jay Stansfield's a good striker. We had him at Hibs last year in the head coach. Oliver Finney's a good midfielder too. And I've seen Aaron Ramsey, but I think that's the younger one, rather than the one that's uh, made headlines in real life for going to Rangers. Aaron Ramsey, yeah, it's the younger version. But Raphael Toloy... 37, eight caps for Italy, and he's lining up in League One for Morecambe. He's away at Hemel Hempstead today. Hopefully, we can catch them out on the counter. Should be a field day for Ricky J. Jones if he can beat the offside trap. Is the other centre half quick? Not hugely, and he's over 30 as well. So, Ricky, you've got a job to do today. Get yourself a hat trick, get us promoted. Well, six minutes on the clock, and it's Morecambe with the early possession. No, Arthur Reed nicks it high up, finds Ricky J. Jones. I was just thinking, actually. As it was a slightly bigger crowd today as Jones is in behind, just wide of the post. That's a sign of things to come though. I was just thinking we might get our second ever sellout if we're promoted before the last day. And commentary at home as well is a big match, so they'll bring a big away crowd. 15 gone, no, no shots on target. We've had the first good chance of the match. Well, over half an hour on the clock, not the most exciting game in the world so far, but we're doing our job, we're staying in it. And what we've got to do is keep a clean sheet. We did that in the last two and it was crucial to our success. As added boy, he gets down the left-hand side. Or the right for them, sorry. Into Stansfield. That's going to be a penalty. I thought Far Carson got the ball. It's Thornley, in fact, who was penalised. So maybe there was a shirt pull or something else. But it is a penalty kick for Morecambe, which Oliver Philly will take. Into the bottom corner from Finney. No stop for Geecock. He saved a couple before, but not this one. Seventh for the season for the Morecambe midfielder. And this is what pressure can do to a team. We've been poor for a month and a half. We're going to berate the lads. We've got 10 to the break. But I don't see the response at the minute. We've got a throw on the right with Bennett Sheriff to Hamilton. Can the other boys send us up by default by losing their games at the top? As Jones gives it to Hamilton again. And Egan into Reed. Through ball towards Jones. Good interception. The experienced centre-halves in fairness for them. Defended very deep and done a good job so far. As Doherty goes to his right back Baker. To Ajiboy, beats his man again. He's been an absolute gem for them so far. Back to Baker, who questionable whether he kept that in or not, but nothing given by the linesman. And it falls for Doherty. Egan heads away to Ricky J. Jones. Malcolm's got him over the top, but plays safe. Thornhill to Hazeman. Into Egan. Across to Far Carson, keeping it well, but no real chances, though. Arthur Reed, space to run into, goes from distance. Oh, what a goal. Fitting of the occasion. The experienced superstar steps up. Far Carson laid it into him. Returned, ran into the space. The defenders were so worried about dropping off because of Jones and Malcolm that they left Reed with the goal at his mercy. It's a wonderful strike. And we're back on terms. The promotion party can start again. As Geecock goes for a big kick, finds Jones direct. This is what we talked about pre-match. Dinks the keeper and hits the bar. Oh, we've come to life. And this is starting to become very enjoyable. Crew a 3-1 down at Mansfield who are doing the job for us. How are Coventry doing at Charlton? We need to get the latest scores up because I think we might be getting promoted as it stands. Can't see Coventry on there. We'll have to have a look again in a minute as Toloy with a header just wide of the post. Coming up to the hour mark. We've not looked good at the back today. Uh, Coventry are two up at Charlton. Wow. So they stay six behind us with three to play which means technically they're still in it. 
but the goal difference should be enough. We're going to think about changes, and particularly at the back. Do you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring McGinley on for Thornhill. I'm going to take Thornley off for Brian War. And in the middle, Hamilton's looking apprehensive. He's not playing great. So I'm going to bring on Kamoy Richardson. Three changes made. Let's see if they make a difference. It's going to do one or two things to our defensive line, isn't it? Well, Crew are fighting back. They're now 3 all with Mansfield. Owen Dale getting a brace. But we can make that all irrelevant with this free kick. Arthur Reed has scored one screamer today. 30 yards out. Oh, good save by the keeper. The man is possessed, playing out of position, but delivering wonderful performances. As Reed puts the ball into the back post, McGinley can't quite get there to Loy heads away. But with a point, we've virtually wrapped it up. Our goal difference is ridiculous. And Bennett Sheriff delivers again. Jones there, might want to make sure, headed away off the line. But Richardson wins it back in the centre circle to Far Carson and Brian Moore. Scott Egan goes wide to Far Carson and Hazeman. There's an overlap at fullback, but we're just keeping it central for now. Hazeman, though, finds Javan Malcolm. Inside to Reed, through to Kamoy Richardson. Oh, an unlikely hero almost. Hits the inside of the post, dribbles along the line, and a left fullback clears it away. That's cruel. It deserved a goal. Into three minutes of stoppage time. Can we send this crowd into pandemonium? Bennett Sheriff crosses. Ricky J. Jones heads in. It had to be him. 91st minute. And we have just guaranteed promotion from League One. Back-to-back -back promotions. It's such a rare feat on this channel because of the way we build clubs, because of the realism we try to employ. But when you've got Ricky J. Jones and Arthur Reed as the spine of your team, the impossible is possible. And Ricky has delivered in the 91st minute to guarantee promotion for Hemel Hempstead Town. We are going to be playing championship football it might have come too soon. We might have to spend years scrapping and settling there. But the finances, the difference in TV money at that level, the difference in revenue and the difference in transfer fees for players we have to sell will make sure that we can build this club properly now. What a moment. What a way to do it. Coventry won. Crew got a point. But it's not enough. We're guaranteed second place. And now we'll play Barnsley off camera and be back for a party at home to Coventry. Well, actually, a quick stop off straight away, because as well as all the promotion stuff that we expect to get, and of course, the fans are going to be delighted, the board are going to praise an unbelievable promotion, but the reason I've stopped off is we've got initial budgets for next season. Now, you know I'm not going to spend much of the transfer budget. What I want to know, though, is whether we're going to be able to improve facilities. Maybe we can start to think about stadiums, etc. Let's see what he says. Greg Wilson, not my best friend after January. You better make yourself popular now. That is infuriating. So he's given us 2.3 million. He sold Thornley for one and a half. And now you're saying, well, actually, we didn't need that money. Oh, you're really frustrating me. It's a great budget. It's a massive increase to wages too. I'm going to see what we can do with Thornley. I want to try and get him and Egan back on loan, keep them to the end of their contracts and then get them back. Because I don't truly believe, particularly in Thornley's case, that he's going to be good enough to play for Norwich. So let's see if we can snatch him back. But for now, we celebrate promotion. We've got one game to play on the road off camera. And we'll be back in a moment for the final day. Well, my God, I did not expect an episode where we celebrate promotion or back-to-back -back promotions to become one of the worst in the series. But I tell you what, the impression I've got the last three or four episodes, our luck's starting to run out. Yes, Leon Bullock is just coming back from injury. He'll be on the bench today. Hopefully Parry the same. He got injured straight after the first game that we showed. But the last couple of weeks have been a disaster. If I go back to you, what, a week or so ago? We put in a bid to extend some of the loans. So Thornhill, McDonough and Thornley. Egan is missing because Reading will not consider loaning him again. We offered to pay all of the wages, nearly four grand a week, and they said no. So it doesn't look like he's coming back. Next bit of bad news. The Thornley one was accepted by Norwich. He's rejected us. So he now is going to be going, a Norwich Premier League they are. So maybe if they come down and we go up and then when it ticks over just before the end of his loan, maybe it will change then. But we offered to pay three and a half grand a week in wages. I wasn't exactly being tight on it. I wanted to get it done, but he rejected us. Then... Zach Geacock got injured for four weeks just after I offered him a new deal. And I mean, you can already see below it the next one. Because Camoy Richardson 
six to seven months with a broken lower leg. So he will now be out till what, November in the next season. This is not how we wanted it to go. It is an utter disaster. And we are going to have to do a lot more work in the summer now than we thought we were beforehand. Add to that that Alador Hamilton has got one year left on his contract and has suddenly decided that he wants, let me just go and show you, because he won't accept a squad player role. He wants £3,800 a week, which is ridiculous. And then we've got the fact that Leon Bullock is probably still going to be wanted in the summer. Loads of championship and League One clubs after him. And even if, if he goes before it ticks over on the 25th of June, it'll probably still be a lower value, which will be annoying. Ricky J. Jones is wanted as well. Burton chasing him. We need the chairman to be strong here and let us do the deals. We're going to lose the experience of Farcarson, Nydam and McGinley. It's going to be a big summer. And do you know what? Staying up next season will be one hell of an effort. What we need really is to find four or five youngsters like the ones we got last summer. So problems off the pitch for sure. But on it, we've done really well. We did lose the last game in the last minutes as well. McIntosh with an 85th minute winner. Look, it was kind of my fault. I'd bought in the likes of Brian Waugh and Camoy Richardson to get the youngsters some football. Richardson obviously now was pointless. And then late on, I tried to get Swan back into fitness, nied him a little bit of a send off and it just backfired. We fell away late on. But at home to Coventry today, we should have a big crowd for the promotion party. Going to have a few players on crutches after the last few weeks. And I don't even know if we can name a bench, which is hilarious given the situation. Let's go and get into it though, because the summer's going to be hard work. So let me have my last day of enjoyment. Charlton on 100 points, we're on 87. But if you look at that, 83 would have been enough for second place, which just seems awful. So let's go and get cracking, pick our lineup, and I'll be back in a moment to run through it. And here is our squad for today. Of course, Hornby getting a game in goal has not played a league game yet this season. So that'll be a nice moment for him. He has agreed to stay on next year for a reduced wage. So I've got no problems with him at all. The issue is this could be a good buy for Thornley, for Egan from the start. Potentially Alidor Hamilton if he doesn't reduce his wage terms. And then even on the bench, we've got to say goodbye to Nydam, Farcarson. And then we've got Bullock returning to fitness and Swan as well. I'm tempted to play Swan, you know. In fact, I'm gonna. I'm gonna play Swan instead of Hamilton because he's annoying me at the minute. We'll put Reed and Hazeman in as the midfield two. Swan as the number 10. And that's going to be our squad for today. Hemel Hempstead Town versus Coventry. It almost feels like the end of an era because despite promotion, I'm not in celebratory form at all. Four changes made for Coventry who, despite having a wonderful side, have dipped into the playoffs. Marcus Force. I mean, we've seen him in the Derby save on Twitch, how good he can be. And he's a quality player, just gone to Hull in real life on loan. Our team, look, it's a little bit hit and miss. We're going to need big improvements for next season. And I don't know that we've got the financial muscle for it. And I also don't know that we've got the pull, the lure for it. If we can't even keep Thornley and Egan on loan, if we can't even get Alador Hamilton tied down to a contract, how can we expect more? Add to that, we've not finished the season well at all. I know we did have those three wins in a row against Bristol Rovers, Peterborough and Morecambe. But they were all by the odd goal. Two of them were late winners. And we've been playing really poorly for two months. So it's certainly not the best way to gain promotion though. Thornhill, who is tied down for next year, pulls the ball late up the pitch. Puts it into the back post. It's headed away. And Grant can counter for Coventry. They're playing decently at the start. Not a massive crowd either, which I thought we'd get. We saw a sellout for Luton as Force is in. Hits the post and wide, but I guess it's not a trophy lift, is it? It's just second place or well, half time. It is nil nil. It's probably been a pretty even game, but we haven't seen any of our attacking chances. I'm going to give Swan an extra 15 minutes, then bring on Bullock for his comeback. And then we'll think about some of the other changes too, because really we do want to say a few goodbyes. But these are people who, not that we don't want to keep, they've refused to sign new deals. So I don't think we should be too friendly with it. As Hyam gets it at the back to Rose. Into Shipley in midfield for Coventry and wide to Grant, who's just turned and done his fullback, but instead cuts back to Ristich. And he finds Rose again. Coventry very comfortable on the ball. And you've got to say it's an achievement for us to finish above sides like this. Albeit we've not been consistent this year, we've been consistent enough as Arthur Reed picks it up. Gives away possession in his own half. Henderson nicks it ahead of the defender. Egan's beaten, as is Thornley. But it's straight at Hornby, the keeper, who does well. I tell you what, that's one hell of a tongue twister back there, isn't it? Hornby, Thornhill, Thornley. 
as there's a long ball downfield towards Javan Malcolm. Runs onto it with no one chasing. Gets in behind. Cuts it across for Ricky J. Jones. And completely against the run of play, we get the lead. And the front two's delivered again. Gotta be fair, Malcolm's finished this season well. And when Stuart Parry's been injured, he stepped up to the plate. Hemel lead, but you know we don't deserve it, as it's a long kick from Coventry. Force goes up, but Sharif wins the header to Ricky J. Jones. And Hazeman can release him again down the right channel. Two or three making their way into the box. Jones can cut back. Delivers in. Hazeman's there. Blocked to Will Swan with an open goal. And he's put it in the back of the net. His 10th of the season, despite injury problems. And we might be finishing with a party after all. We haven't deserved it, but we'll take it. Swan, as we get to the hour mark, just going to give him a rest in a moment. Though a front post header just over from Coventry. Let's bring back Leon Bullock after three months out with a broken leg. Don't forget, such a key part of us being up near the top of the league this season was matching Ricky J. Jones was top scorer at one point halfway through the year. If it wasn't for that injury... Well, he probably would have been sold by now, so it might be a good thing in the end. I'm also going to take off Egan, who's not had the best game, and obviously may well be leaving us. Alador Hamilton on for him. And then at right back, do you know what? I'm going to tuck Sharif in because Brian Moore is on his way back too, and I don't want injuries. McDonough on at right back, Sharif tucks in. 20 to go, we lead 2-0. And obviously, although we're finishing on 90 points, with this game being the final one, we could have gone up on 82, which... It's just ridiculous from 46 games. I don't know why the points totals for promotion are so low in some of these leagues. Coventry again having good chances from set pieces but not making them count. And they've got to throw on the right hand side. Can they finally get the consolation? Because boy do they deserve it. Sheaf picks it up the sub to Stewart. Got a chance to go left. Instead play short again. Sheaf wide to wrist stitch on the left hand side. Chance to cross from the byline but cuts back. Maybe a little bit hesitant to get the ball in are they? Which seems weird because they've got four or five committed. Malcolm nicks it on the counter. Releases Ricky J. Jones. Let's teach them a lesson in ruthlessness. Was that not a handball? I could have sworn the keeper straight out of his box there. It doesn't matter though. It's a 2-0 win. And the Hemel Hempstead fans applaud the players who have wrapped up promotion in second place. And back-to-back -back promotions from League 2 to the Championship. So in terms of the end of season review, as we finish on the competition screen, we will be back in two days time to talk through a little bit about training because I've been asked some questions about that in the comments in the last season and also to reflect on how we're going to build a side for next year because at the moment, I'm not sure how we do. We've got to change the minds of a couple of these or find some players through the scout reports because we're not finding those youngsters getting released from top clubs. Even our parent club can't help us on that front. So do we have to rely on loans a bit more next year or do we have to go for a bit more experience? That didn't really work out last time we had to do it in League 2. We almost got relegated. So a big summer to come. We'll be back with our season review on Friday and then a transfer special for the Championship on Sunday at 3.30pm. What a way to wrap up back-to-back -back promotions with a crisis off the pitch. Injuries, lack of returning loans. And of course, still haunted by those transfer processes that the chairman took out of our hands in January. So if you did enjoy the episode, seeing us wrap up promotion for the second time in succession, please do put a thumbs up on it. Those of you that have been here from the start will know how rare that is in one of our One Club stories. I know we're fortunate that we had it with Dover in FM22 in the head coach earlier in the save. But here, it's a rare occurrence because we manage the club realistically. We do have to sell players and deal with chairmen like the ones we've had here. But we've still got Ricky J. Jones. And as long as that's the case, I have faith that he'll again keep us up next season. If you want to find out and stay up to date, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM22 content. Let me know in the comments where you think we need to improve. Or it might even be easier to say where you think we don't need to improve going into next season. And do you think Ricky's goal power can save us despite chaos in virtually every other position? As I mentioned, it's a massive episode in the head coach tomorrow. Please do check it out. It will be saved defining. You can find that playlist in the eye above as well as the Twitch channel, the food channel and the football podcast too. But a massive thank you for watching, for following along for another season. I'll see you on Friday for the end of year review. <laughs>